So Glock finally got around to producing a single stack 9mm, the gun everybody's been waiting for since, well, ever since micro single stack 9s have been a thing people knew they could have. The question I keep hearing is whether the Glock 43 was worth the wait, but really, nobody was actually just waiting. While Glock took their time with this release, anybody who really wanted a good pocket 9mm went out and bought an M&P Shield, or a Walther PPS, or a Sig P938, or one of the other dozen ultra-compact single-stack 9mm that have been released in the last couple of years. The real question is not whether it was worth the wait, but what does the Glock 43 bring to the table in an already crowded market except a big G on the slide? Let's start with the basics. The size puts it right in the middle of its class, maybe a little toward the smaller end. I think Glock designed this with the intention that it's actually gonna be shot. They weren't going for the smallest nine millimeter, but the smallest one that you can still get a good grip on and actually control. It's not the only single stack nine millimeter on the market to strike this balance between shootability and concealability, but Glock has managed to do it as well as anybody else. If you've avoided Glocks in the past because of the boxy feel of the grip, the 43 is a welcome deviation. Just like they did with the 42, Glock seems to have put a lot of thought into the ergonomics of the 43, and that's extra important in a small semi-auto. The grip is shaped to optimize the position of the firing hand. You can get it nice and high up close to the bore line, and that translates to less felt recoil and less muzzle flip. Everything else about the Glock 43 is just what you'd expect from a Glock. It's got the same trigger, the same takedown procedure, the same terrible plastic sights. But aside from the sights, the bigger disappointment is the magazine capacity. The Glock 43 comes with two six round magazines. One is a flush fitting magazine and the other has a pinky extension, but it's still just six rounds. All of the major competitors to the Glock 43 have a seven or eight round extended magazine as an option. Some of them even have a seven round flush fitting magazine. There are some aftermarket solutions for the Glock 43 mag capacity, like these base plates from Terran Tactical. This one allows you to add one extra round to the magazine, and the other is a plus two for a total of eight. I'm pretty skeptical of whether these are gonna work long term. These base plates use the original factory spring, so you're adding capacity to the magazine, but you're actually decreasing spring tension, and that could very well cause some reliability issues down the road. Now, so far they've been okay, but we're gonna need to put some more rounds down range to find out for sure. Capacity isn't the only downside to carrying a small gun. They're also typically tough to shoot accurately with any kind of speed. Relative to other small 9mm, the Glock 43 actually handles pretty well at the range. But that's not saying much. You can't change the laws of physics. The dirty little secret of the Glock 43 and the other pocket 9mm is that a lot of people who own them really just don't shoot them as well as they think they do. Getting a nice little group on paper isn't too hard with slow fire, but under any kind of pressure or time limitation, the group size tends to spread out or shots will even get thrown off target completely. This can happen even to experienced shooters who can normally run a full-size handgun fairly well. It usually comes down to problems with trigger control or grip that are specific to small semi-autos like this. On the grip, there's just less real estate for your hands to come into contact with, so you have to make a special effort to figure out how to make it work for your hands so you don't have to adjust your grip in between every shot. And as for trigger control, the Glock 43 technically does have the same trigger as any other Glock, but in a pistol this light, it actually feels heavier. I measured this Glock 43 trigger at about eight pounds, which is pretty typical for a factory Glock. Now trying to hold a one pound gun completely still while you apply eight pounds of pressure with just your index finger, that's not easy. Fortunately, if you have a problem with this, it's fairly easy to fix. One of the best things about Glocks in general is that they're really easy to work on, and because of that, there's a ton of aftermarket support. Swapping out a couple of parts to change the feel of the Glock 43 trigger just takes a couple of minutes, and the parts are usually very affordable. But with or without a decent trigger, we're still looking at a small gun with significant recoil that's tough to shoot accurately under stress. That's not a condemnation of the Glock 43 in particular, but it's more of a warning. Just because it's a Glock doesn't mean you're gonna be able to run it like a bigger Glock, like the 17 or 19 or even the 26. It's much less forgiving of sloppy technique. So what has the Glock 43 brought to the table besides brand name recognition? 
Well, really not much, but that in itself is worth a lot. Glock has a well-deserved reputation for reliability, especially with their 9mm pistols. If the 43 is as good as the other 9s, then it should be on everyone's shortlist for an ultra discreet carry gun. Now, I'm not done with the Glock 43 yet. I'm gonna keep shooting this one, and coming up in future videos, we'll be doing some in-depth comparisons with a few other small 9mm. I've also raided the Lucky Gunner warehouse and grabbed a bunch of different 9mm loads, and I'll be testing the Glock 43 with as many of those as I can to find out which ones it'll run with and which ones it might have some trouble with. So subscribe to our channel, and we'll keep you updated on how the Glock 43 performs long-term.